So hi, um, I'm Julia from Ocean Light Yoga, as Lucy just said. And, you know, I teach quite an unusual style of yoga in the fact that it's not all about trying to get into a certain shape or make your body different, but more about welcoming who you are and moving in ways that feel really good for you. And I know that our guest, Lucy Wyndham Reed is also very much of this ethos, so it's really lovely to meet you, Lucy. You have been so popular um, and really kind of accelerated that popularity through lockdown with your YouTube channel, haven't you? Which has had, I think, nearly a quarter of a billion views, which is incredible, um, and nearly two million followers now. So just so, so popular that you've been recognised as well by the industry and um, been recognised as the fitness influencer of the year for 2021. So congratulations. I still have to keep pinching myself. I can't believe <laughs> it, but yeah, I mean, it, it's lovely. And, and you and I both were talking earlier on, you know, what we both have is a passion to really help people move their bodies and just feel good about themselves. And, you know, as we said, it isn't about looking a certain way. It's about feeling a certain way. And, you know, we all have the ability to be our best and move our bodies. And I think especially through lockdown, people were stuck at home. They needed to do something for their mental health, I think more than their physical health. And um, it was great because I set up my YouTube channel all the way back in 2012, before we had any idea this pandemic was on the horizon. And so it was so nice to know that I had so many different workouts on my channel that people could just go on because they're all free and just at home, click on that video, do this workout. and and just help them to keep moving. And um, yeah, I was very surprised when I had um, a phone call from a journalist saying, um, did you realize that Ofcom have stated that you were the most viewed YouTube channel through lockdown? And there were loads of other really popular, big fitness people. So I was like, what me? I was like, no idea. So it was lovely, but you know, just knowing it's helped people has been amazing. Mm, yeah, I mean, I think that's it, isn't it? Just no, knowing that what you're doing is having an effect and that people are really valuing it. And I know I did a couple of sessions this morning before we came on air um, and they're so powerful. They're, you know, simple, effective um, and really, you know, well, well instructed, just so clear. And I think the beauty, I don't know if this has been part of the popularity, is that they're sure and easy, but they do make a difference, don't they? Seven minutes seven minute workouts you know who can't find seven minutes i think um, that's that's so true because we're all rushing around and you know 20 minutes 30 minutes we can just about find but sometimes we might just be too busy right seven minutes we can just we can all do that you know if it's just you set that alarm 10 minutes earlier in the morning you jump out there three minutes get ready and there's your workout done seven minutes you know it's um and I think for me as a trainer my job is to provide solutions so when people are struggling to get healthy and fit um it's like look at why and perhaps they get bored or perhaps the workouts aren't effective or they're too long so in which case then I know I've got to create something that's effective short and easy to follow so I sort of feel like uh, you know it's coming up with the solutions and that one has helped so many people in fact that the one the first seven minute video I did has now had over 130 million views it's one of the most watched YouTube workouts ever so it not I know it works <laughs> Yeah, and I can understand why, you know, I can really understand why having watched them myself and enjoyed them and, you know, your workouts are, are now a part of my programme too. So thank you for that. How did, how did you get into fitness? You know, can you tell us a bit about your journey into fitness, maybe how it's helped you through, you know, life's ups and downs along the way? Well, you know, it's really funny. Everyone just assumes that I've done fitness all my life and that I was really sporty, popular kid at school flipped that around I was so completely the opposite I was so shy I was really bullied I dreaded sports at school I mean I had every excuse to get out of games and PE at school because I would always be that child that I mean I think they still I don't know actually if they still do it but in PE where they would split you in two groups and they'd always choose the most two popular kids as the captains and then they'd get to pick who they would want in their team and I was always the last one standing. 
and it I just remember it it just I would dread it because you felt awkward you felt like no one wanted you it was just horrible so it for me I've never forgotten that and I've always as I've got older thought I never want to make anyone feel like that in fact I want to be the person that is going to pick who no one else is going to pick I want to pick them and so anyway going through school hated sports just was not the person that I wanted to be and I came out of the army and and my family are um I've got the best family in the world my mum and dad I just adore with all my heart they've given me the best life as well as my sister so we're very very close my dad's a folk singer my mum's an artist and I came back from college one day and I just said I'm gonna go and join the army and literally their faces dropped they were like what um but I did it because I knew it was going to be the ultimate challenge so anyway long and short of it I joined the army and I spent five years in the army but it was within the army that I knew I couldn't have any excuses and say to the sergeant oh can I please um I've got tummy ache I can't I can't do PE today there was no way I could do that so in a way I got thrown in the deep end and that's when I realized actually I could be fit and I was worth picking at the beginning not at the end and so my fitness grew my confidence grew and it was you know in a way it was just the most amazing thing it sort of set me up for life and I spent five years in the army and then very tragically the love of my life my my first love got killed and and so for me his death was you know that was a real turning point it was a point where I just obviously was was very lost very low I was young 21 and we sort of fallen in love at the age of 15 so then it was my my passion my mission had kind of changed I wanted to come out of the army and I came out and then qualified in fitness and going through grief the one thing that really helped get me through was doing the exercise just keeping busy and then also wanting to help other people so that's sort of in a way really where it's gone from being a very young child to not doing any fitness and sports and dreading it in a way how I sort of turned a negative around into a positive that now I know I'm helping millions and literally millions of people around the world feel good about themselves. Mm, thank you for sharing that and you know it was so brave to go into the army and then you know another kind of bravery turning that around coming through grief and finding a way to use exercise as a, as a thing that could keep you on track yeah. um, and bring that to everybody else. So you really have that deep compassion, don't you, for, for others and what they might be going through. 100%, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's kind yeah. of, at the end of the day, there's nothing nicer than giving to people and kindness is what keeps us all together. And we know that more than ever now. Mm. And it's brought you to today and you, you, you mentioned your family and your closeness to your family and your mum being an artist. And I'm sure everybody's noticed that really breathtaking picture behind you. Can you tell us a bit about that and its significance? Absolutely. Well, I think it was about a year and a half ago, my mum was really struggling with her eyes and um, she'd always been an incredible painter, um, but found it very hard to see. And through COVID, we couldn't kind of get any appointments, but she had this vision and she wanted to create this painting that represents what we call man's greed, how, you know, we're now losing our animals, the world is changing. And, and she, anyway, she had this vision and she just spent months and months working on this, which is, let me just, I'm gonna show it to you, it's just so incredible. And um, if you can see there, so we've got all the climate change and it says man's greed going through to all the animals that are affected and that we're losing. And my dad was so proud of this painting. She just did it really, just it was her vision. And he decided to write to the BBC to see if they could forward on a letter to Sir David Attenborough and just show a little picture of the painting and just let him see and aware of it. And he actually personally wrote back and he said, this painting is amazing. He would love a copy. So that's why I just thought it was so nice to share this story. So we're very proud that Sir David Attenborough has got my mum's beautiful painting at, her, at his house. So um, <laughs> yeah, and it's, you know, th this was, this is where I very much get my strength from for my family. My mum was like, you know, never give up. You can do whatever you put your mind to, which is what she did with that painting as well. 
Mm, yeah, and it is incredible. I think it was Gina said, you know, just the detail on it is, is, is phenomenal. And especially when she was suffering with her eyesight. So what a thing. And of course, the Festival of Discovery this year is focused on climate change. And there's just been the inaugural run, that's hard to say, <laughs> of um, Run of the Earth, which you're an ambassador for as well, which is in partnership with Eden Project, you know. So it's obviously close to your heart. Can you tell us a little about you know, climate change, the impact for you and, and what led you to be an ambassador for the run of the earth? Well, I mean, I just think it's, we've got to do something now and the more voices we have talking about it and it's about learning just how small changes can make a big difference. And it's, you know, we can't put this off now. And so for me, this is where I jumped at the opportunity to be able to do this. You know, I know how important a green space is for us mentally as well. So it's like with exercising, one thing I do say to people is if you can get outdoors, actually go outdoors, you know, be in a green space, just go and look at the trees, look at the wildlife. I mean, it's just magic there for us and we've got to stop destroying it and we've got to do everything we can to save it. Yeah, because it's not that, you know, the earth will go on, but but we won't if we're not careful and certain species won't go on either, will they? So it's exactly what this is about. That painting is about, yeah. And getting out in nature and exercising, I think, again, you know, very, very close to my heart. Um, you also mentioned a little bit earlier about that, you know, the positivity and how you've inherited that um, determination, that sort of resilience with the idea of, yes, I can. Um, how does that play out in your your workouts or, you know, how tips you might have for other people to get motivated maybe to begin? Yeah, I think it's it's actually applies to every aspect of my life. I, ha I have this kind of saying like, yes, I can. So whatever life throws at me, and I think this is so important for us all to realise that, you know, we are so much stronger than we think. And sometimes it's only when we're pushed that little bit deeper in perhaps a darker place that we then realize our full resilience and throughout my life but you know several different things have happened that have pushed me to that really dark place and it's actually it's that time that I've just thought no you know I've, I've got to change I've got to fight this and and every time I've done that I've then realized it's like a light goes off it's like actually we all control our confidence we control our mind and you know when, when we really just give ourselves positive thoughts just take a deep breath and just say yes I can break it down and and try and not let our fears control us I I think that's where you know it's really powerful years ago if you'd said to me can you stand up on stage and talk to people I was so shy I would have been like nope can't do it got a sore throat lost my voice again I would have every excuse and then years ago I got asked to do a TEDx talk and I was like wow what an amazing opportunity I'm really nervous I want to say no I'm saying no because it's a fear so instead I'm going to say yes I'm going to say yes I can and I did it and it was amazing and then I realized it's actually it's all down to us it was just me saying to myself yes you can do it and I went on stage and it was great to share my story so it was changing that mindset you know, at the end of the day, everything boils down to mindset. And that's very much the case with exercise. You know, when we teach it our mind and, and say to ourselves, a bit like with the seven minutes, it's just seven minutes. That's when it becomes doable. And I think it's just realizing every single one of us has so much ability and capability. And it's just kind of presetting that default, that mind is just, yes, I can, instead of no, I can't. Mm, I love that. It's, it's just that one word, isn't it? It's so powerful saying yes, saying yes and giving it a go. And there's kind of nothing, there's nothing to lose, is there? Um, I know like I work with the energy body through yoga as well. And it's, it could be something to try is like if you're say doing squats yeah. and you're starting to feel that no come up, you know, it's like, oh God, when's it going to end? And you just keep saying to yourself, yes 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 and it's phenomenal isn't it? i'm sure you've experienced that the difference it makes uh, it, it is like kind of a gift that you want to say to people you've all like every single one of us can achieve and succeed and we can achieve and succeed in saving our planet as well you know with just that motivation education determination and discipline 
Yeah, and just just that, how you can actually change your body just by what you say in your mind as well. Um, I've just seen a little question coming in from Sarah saying, do you have any tips for young teenage girls who are struggling to find confidence and motivation? Absolutely, and I think that's such an important thing. Our younger generation um, is, they have to realize that they are unique. There is no one else that is like them and they have to embrace that, they have to love that and, and look at exercise as a way of not trying to do it to look like anyone else, do it as making your heart strong, your bones strong. And, and I would just say, just find um, some really fun workouts and just have the right mindset, have it for about, you know, as a teenager, your body is really still growing. So it's really important to, to do the right exercises and, and not be influenced, unfortunately, by some people that we might see that are kind of perhaps give the wrong message and aspire to people like our athletes and our heroes like that. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's great advice to really, you know, start in a way that feels like it's something for you and for how your body is inside. And then the results come, don't they? Because like you, you know, your body looks incredible. I know you're in the second half of life now, like me, but you know, nobody would guess. But that's just like a side benefit, really, isn't it? And it's so, I think, easy sometimes, with especially I feel for the younger generation in the Instagram era, you know that you see the thing and you think that's how you're meant to be but you're not meant to be anything um now, i often say in the fitness industry you see so many people that are saying they take this product that product and they're just you know protein shakes such a no load of nonsense at the end of the day you can get protein from food but you know they're getting paid thousands and and it's all so manipulative and and i find it really sad and that's why i would really say to anyone with young children you know social media follow follow our amazing athletes, Paralympians, follow people like that, like our doctors and scientists and really inspirational people, not, not people that perhaps have been on reality TV shows that, you know, I, I won't go, go off on a high horse. <laughs> but I, th I think it's really important. It's, you know, let, let's just remember someone is beautiful, not because of how they look, but who they are and what they do and, and what they give back. And I think that's really important for that younger generation. They're so easily influenced and it's really important at that age to really teach them about actually life is about giving, it's about being there for people, it's about having a kind heart, it's about learning, challenging ourselves. Yeah, and finding the passion, like you said, like we're both fortunate enough to have found our passion, aren't we? And to be living that passion and sharing it with others. Um, and I and I and I love what you said about you know, let's let's not be looking to um, be a celebrity or be a something. The way it's happened, like the way it's happened for you, is organic because you were passionate and you were, you know, at home putting your videos out because you just genuinely wanted to share something with the world. Um, I think, as Gemma says on here as well, it's very scary because young people are quite fitness of being perfect or thin and no, no. And, and fitness we know fitness doesn't come in any shape or any size everybody's body is so different and also you might have someone that says they're fitness you don't know how healthy they are and it's like I, I really think it's actually what we just need to do and everyone would be so happy if we can just accept who we are and love who we are and also our bodies are going to change because we're all going to get older if we're lucky enough to and you know so we don't want that pressure that we've got to look a certain way and it's mm. you, you know nothing actually the most beautiful asset on anyone is confidence confidence and kindness and I think it's yeah it's really important to teach that to to our youngsters and that's a really powerful message um and you touched on you know if we're all lucky enough to carry on with this life, you know, and how precious it is. How about the future for you? What's what's the future looking like for Lucy going forward? Um, do you know what? It's exhausting because I work nonstop. I'm so passionate about what I do. And, you know, my mission is simply just to carry on giving great workouts to people on YouTube and, and making a difference to people's health. I mean, I, I get literally now doctors from America to India prescribing my workouts to their patients I get emails from people that have come off medication um, and it just is it's the 
best gift ever. So for me, really, I think it's just carry on doing what I'm doing. Um, I love doing the motivational speaking. I'd love to do more of that. But really, I think it's just working out at home um, and just carrying on doing that. And who knows? I have got a cat here. She's with the cat, yeah. <laughs> working now sit at home with the cat. <laughs> yeah. So um, who knows? I, I'm very much just have to grab every opportunity and run with it. And so, yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah, it's I literally got. I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. This, you know, absolutely. And um, it gave me tingles when you said about people, um, doctors across the world who are recommending your videos to patients and how people are coming off medication as a result yeah. from seven minutes a day. You know, it's um, such an inspiring message. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's been well, a real you. joy. And um, I don't know if, if, if it's already been put out in the in the comments, but if you want to find Lucy, where to find her, but you know, you'll quickly find her on YouTube and um, Fitness Influence of the Year 2021. Um, and yeah, it's just been joyful. Thank you so much. And thank you, Eden, for hosting this and the Festival of Discovery. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you everyone for joining as well. Thank you.